Painting freehand on a model can be a scary thing. I'm here to show you how easy it can be. Greetings friends, Craig here on the third floor with the next part in our series of painting the Dormador de Caveras by Weird Miniatures. We're now going to do a little bit of freehand work on the back of the um, shawl of uh, this model. We're going to paint two roses um, on it. This is a very simple freehand, but hopefully it'll give you a chance to uh, alleviate fears that you might have. I'll take you step by step through um, kind of how I think through the process, um, how I um, correct mistakes as they happen. Uh, and hopefully this will uh, alleviate and give you some uh, courage to go out there and do some freehand work of your own. All right, let's jump in. Okay, let's do some freehand. So on the back of the shawl, I've uh, sketched out on a paper. Uh, I want two roses um, that are kind of intertwined with each other, and they're going to be red. And had I not already sketched this out and know what the basic shapes are going to be, I might do it in a dark gray, something close to that black, to just to kind of sketch in the shapes. But the fact that I've already kind of done that and feel pretty confident, I'm going to go right to this pallid witch flesh, which is kind of a grayish white. And we're going to do a couple things here. One, we're going to sketch in the shapes of the two uh, roses. I'm going to add some flow improver. And then you'll see how we'll kind of leverage the fact that we've done this in white to um, uh, take advantage of it versus the black. So I'm going to thin this down just a little bit and paint in the basic shapes. And then as I progress, you'll see why I'm doing it here in white. And essentially, the shapes of these two rose buds are going to be a left and right crescent with a kind of a C-shaped swirl along the top, and it'll give me the uh, the look of a rose bud. When you're doing freehand at this scale, um, you got to keep things pretty simple, and some couple basic shapes will actually sell the effect. So there's a left crescent and kind of a right crescent. And I'll do the swirl along the top. It's almost like a backwards C. Okay. And there's my first rosebud. And we'll go ahead and block out the white a little bit, clean it up a tad. same thing here on the left and of course my holder is blocking our view we'll be able to see it in a second it's just another left crescent like I did uh, with the first rows so there's the left side Side. So those are two crescents, and now we just need to swirl along the top. Real easy to kind of fill in those shapes once you get them blocked out. There's my two rosebuds. Now, the reason that I made them white first is because I'm gonna come in here now with a blood red um, mixed with some yellow, 
or I'm sorry, uh, some blood red by itself. And uh, I'm gonna paint that over the white. And it's gonna allow this blood red to be a brighter red than had I done it directly over black. So that's the first reason to kind of sketch them in in white first is uh, it's gonna allow this red to be nice and bright, which is what I wanted. And two, you'll notice that I'm leaving a little bit of white behind and still visible. So I'm not completely covering the white with a red. This um, is gonna create a, the illusion of an outline around uh, the red areas and also the white against the red and eventually I'll be adding orange to this. All of that creates depth. So now we're just going in with the red and filling in the majority of the areas that I just painted the uh, Pallid Witch Flesh. But not all of it. Same thing on the second one. Notice the red is thinned, um, so you know it's not. I'm getting creating also creating depth because there's more pigment on one than on the other. All right, let's add kind of an orangish red to the uh, palette, and here we are going to bring in this uh, yellow. So we'll use the sole yellow from uh, Scale Color, and by mixing the red with the yellow, I'm going to be able to get some nice oranges. And I'm just going to put little dots of orange at different places where the light's going to be hitting these this freehand. And again, just to create some nice depth, um, so we don't have just red. You'll see that creates a nice bright orange. And I'm just going to hit a couple different spots on the red to create some tonal differences. And uh, like I said, just gives some depth and also reinforces where the folds are. In the underlying shawl. Okay. All right, next. Um, I'm going to start basically painting in the stems um, and you'll notice that I'm not doing it in green which you would think I would do for roses. I'm going to actually do the stems and the cradle that holds the um, flowers in a yellow and for a couple reasons. One, green really doesn't fit into this color scheme that I've got. Um, she's pretty simple color scheme which is uh, whites, blacks, reds and yellows and by using yellow here um, if I get the shapes right, it won't look weird, uh, even though, you, again, you might expect green, but two, it's going to tie in nicely with that detail uh, fringe that we have at the end of the dress. There will also be some yellows uh, in the skull itself, so that means we have some yellows in the top, middle, and bottom of uh, the miniature, so it all ties together nicely. So, real simple here, I'm just putting in the very base of the cradle that holds the roses. That'll then extend out with uh, the actual stems of the roses here. I don't want this too bright because I don't want it to pull away attention from the actual uh, red of the rose. So now let's work on the stems themselves. So this is a really dark yellow, almost a brown, an XV88 from Citadel. And we're going to go ahead and put in the basic shapes of the stems. They're just going to be two stems that extend down and wrap around each other. Very simple pattern. Just marking where the stems will come out. And 
this is gonna be the foreground stem and then the one on the right is gonna fall behind it and all I have to do to create that illusion is instead of having them cross I just leave a little bit of a black um, and that uh, gives the illusion that one stem is behind the other see on either side of the stem coming off the left rows there's a little bit of black there which again gives that illusion that the stem coming off the right rows is falling behind the one off the left now that I've sketched out the basic shapes we can just make sure we got coverage so we'll go over it again go over them again that looks good all right let's put some depth to those stems so here we're going to take our Avaland sunset the same thing that we use to create uh, the stem cradles under each of the rows we're going to go back over the XV88 with this Avaland this will tie it to this roast uh, rose cradles and it'll also create again some depth um, I'm not completely covering the XV88. Uh, the parts where the underfolds are and where there's not light hitting, I leave the XV88. But the majority of this is now going to be an Averland. As always, I'm stopping and checking and taking a look. All right, let's put some final highlights on these stems using the Flash Glitz yellow, which is a very bright yellow. And here we're just gonna hit a couple spots in the upper parts of the folds. to again, reinforce the folds, add a little bit of visual interest by having a different tone of yellow. See, I'm not putting much on there, just little dots here and there. This visually makes it a little bit more interesting to look at. And that's it, really. Uh, so a very basic freehand. Um, again, sketch it out on paper first, and then uh, go back and uh, try it on some models. If you make a mistake, start all over again and paint the whole thing black. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe this video, and uh, next up we're going to be looking at the pantyhose. Take care.